morning and welcome to the first Open Infrastructure Summit. Please welcome Allison Randall. Welcome to Denver and our surprise freezing cold snap. This is the first Open Infrastructure Summit building on a long tradition of OpenStack summits. Now, changing the name is part of a broader strategic movement, recognizing that we are stronger when we're stronger and innovate faster and meet the needs of our users better when we collaborate and integrate across open infrastructure communities. So open infrastructure involves public, private, and hybrid clouds together with other established and emerging areas like containers, CICD, edge computing, NFV, 5G, and AI. Now you'll hear more about all these areas today in the keynotes, later this week in the breakout sessions, the forum, the workshops, and trainings. Now the summits are an important enabler of collaboration. We bring people together from all around the world to get to know each other, exchange ideas, and make plans for upcoming development work. The summits would not be possible without our headline sponsors. So please take time this week to reach out and thank them. You'll find them in the marketplace and around the sessions and events. We also want to thank the sponsors of the project teams gathering later this week, where many projects will have in-depth working sessions. A big round of thanks to the individuals who contributed to the travel support program. They made it possible for community members who don't have the resources to fund their own travel to join us here at the summit. Now, open source is all about participation and feedback, so we have some handy tools to help you do that. Uh, the mobile app on Android and iOS helps you keep on top of what's happening so you don't miss out on opportunities for collaboration. And we want to hear about your experiences with the summit and the breakout sessions so we can improve the summit next year. On the lighter side, Getting to know people is a significant part of successful open source collaboration. So there'll be many opportunities for small groups to go out and get to know each other after the events, in the, like after the sessions in the, in the evening, but I want to highlight a couple of large group events. Um, one is the Mixer in the marketplace tonight at 5.30, and another is the community party tomorrow at 8.30. Make a point of reaching out and talking to people you don't know yet. You never know, it might spark off a great collaboration. So while you're enjoying the summit this week, you can start looking forward to our next summit in Shanghai. Uh, this is the first one we have ever had in China, so we're really looking forward to the opportunity to get to know our colleagues in open source collaboration locally who couldn't maybe travel as far as Denver. Uh, so, Keep an eye out for the CFP, and also we announced that registration is open now, so you can get started. So first up today, uh, we have a bit of a blast from the past and a vision from the future from the executive director of the OpenStack Foundation. So please welcome Jonathan Bryce. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Denver. It's great to see everybody here. Uh, as Allison said, uh, this is the Open Infrastructure Summit. Um, how many of you are here for the first time? OK. It's a little bit of a trick question, because we're all here for the first time. So. <laughs> uh, Allison talked a little bit about what, you know, what, what this uh, event is really going to be about this week. And uh, you know, I think that, that for me, it's recognizing some of the things that we've learned over the last few years. We've done a lot of events, a lot of different kinds of events, but I think our events that have had the biggest impact are the ones that focused on collaboration, on work, on bringing people together to uh, solve problems in person, and then set up really productive work that happens the rest of the year when we're off in all of our, uh, our, our locations all around the world. And so to me, that's what this week is, is really all about and, and what I think the shift in the event is oriented towards. Let's use this time to, to get together, to work on problems, and, and set ourselves up for success the rest of the time. And actually, you know, the event this week, um, it has a very broad base. We have a couple thousand people from over 50 countries, like uh, we, we traditionally have. 
Uh, but we have more collaborative working sessions this week than at any event we've ever done. And I think that that is, is really important. So, you know, as we think about what this week is about, it's about getting work done and moving open infrastructure together overall. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things that, uh, that I, I have learned through OpenStack and also, you know, going back to before OpenStack and some of the things that I have, have come to believe. One of the things that I believe and that I've seen in my life is that technology is a really powerful force for changing lives. And, uh, and I think that, you know, one of the things we've seen in the last few years is that this, uh, this can be in a good way, sometimes in a, in a not so good way, but technology really does change our lives, the way that we work and that we interact. I also have seen that collaboration among individuals is another really powerful force for changing lives. And if you put these together, then I think if you wanna have an impact on the world today, involving yourselves in open collaboration to build technology is one of the best places to do it. And I also think that openly collaborating leads to more good outcomes and more good changes from technology than, uh, than other ways of, of kind of building technology and, and other, um, other motivations that may come into play. So I wanna talk a little bit about some of my personal experiences and, uh, and also um, some of, of what I think we've learned as a community and where we, where we can go from here. And to do that, I wanna go way back. I wanna start way back. You know, uh, kids often have, have dreams about what they wanna be in the future, astronauts, firefighters, um, I too had a dream when I was a kid, and uh, I heard, heard the mantra that you should dress for the job you want, not the job you have. Um, so I, I, I did this. I wanted to be a rodeo clown, and this is not Halloween, by the way. This is for real. This is just me dressing as a rodeo clown, which I did occasionally, because I thought that that was maybe like the coolest job out there in the world. As I got a little older, you know, I got exposed to, to more things, more ideas, and I had two interests that really developed kind of simultaneously. Um, this is me with my first computer. You can see, you know, I've always been exceptionally cool. Uh, that I was really excited though because, um, you know, this was, a, uh, this was an x86 and uh, I, it's the computer I learned to program on. Uh, but the thing that, that I was very interested in at the time was music and this computer had a sound card and uh, there were a few different um, applications and, and programming languages on there that, uh, that had some of the early support for, uh, for kind of programming digital music and, and um, playing around with a sound card. The other thing that I was really interested in at that time was music. And I, uh, I played clarinet. Over time, I picked up other instruments. And I was, I was really convinced that I wanted to have a career in music. Um, I, I loved it. It's still something that, that I, uh, I love and spend time on. And so growing up, you know, I, I uh, was very focused on music and computers were kind of a hobby, a thing that, uh, that, that I um, worked into my love of music. But that all changed a few years later in uh, 1995 when during a summer I worked in San Antonio, Texas at a commercial cleaning company, cleaning toilets and office buildings and taking out trash and, and, uh, and uh, working with, with this company that, that my brothers were involved in. And uh, one of my brothers, he, uh, he knew that I played around with computers. And he said, hey, I heard about this, this World Wide Web thing. And it seems like, you know, companies in the future are going to be present on the World Wide Web. Do you know anything about it? What would that mean? How do we do that? And, uh, and basically kind of uh, sent me off to figure out how to create a website, and how to um, put their little company online. And 1995 was actually still pretty early for companies to be doing that. Um, and, and so the, to do that back then was, uh, was, there was a lot of manual effort if you really wanted to build a website, and if you wanted to build a dynamic website, which somehow in my head, I got the idea that this commercial cleaning company needed like a portal and, <laughs> and a dynamic back end and all of this. And, uh, and so I, I built that for them, and some of their customers then uh, really liked this website and said, hey, can, how, how did you get that? Where do we get something similar? And so in 1995, I discovered that, um, that technology was actually a pretty good way to make money as a teenager. 
Definitely, you know, a, 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 a easier than, than mowing lawns and, and cleaning toilets, which is what I had been doing. Uh, so this is when my life took a little bit of a, of a turn towards, towards technology. And then what, what happened after that point uh, really accelerated my involvement in technology. A few years later, I started working at a, at a little company there in San Antonio called Rackspace.com. Uh, this website is a blast from the past. Um, but this is where I got my first exposure to open source. And over the next couple of years, what I worked on within Rackspace was taking open source technologies, integrating them into, um, into our systems, and building tools that automated things that our customers were doing. So this was, uh, was, was really my first uh, usage of open source and seeing how powerful it was as a way to, to provide access to technology. What I did after that point is I kind of took all of the things that I was learning, and with one of my best friends, Todd Morey, I started a company that tried to create a self-service, highly automated, um, expandable system for hosting websites, web applications. Eventually, we, uh, we added virtual servers and uh, an object storage, and it became the Rackspace Cloud. And during that time, it went from me and Todd, two employees, to about 500. It went from two servers to tens of thousands of servers. It went from about $2 of revenue to $100 million of revenue. And we scaled like crazy because cloud was, was such a, a, a hot um, part of the industry at the time. And through that, we learned a lot of lessons. But one of the ones that really stood out to me, and something that I still believe today, is that technology is not a sustainable long-term advantage. And it's kind of weird, perhaps, to say that, since we are all in an industry that's called the tech industry. But there's always somebody who's going to copy you, who's going to catch you, who's going to surpass you. And if you are trying to build technology that creates that long-term sustainable advantage, it's, it's really an impossible task. And you have to constantly be on this hamster wheel. And if you accept that, and you accept that that is not where your long-term advantage is going to come from, then you realize that you shouldn't take on the burden of trying to build all of the technology you need yourself. And that leads you to open source. And I think a, a, a version of open source that is very much you know, the way we work in this community, which is that open source is not about marketing you know, some kind of, of, uh, of, of other product. It's not a business model on its own. It's really an innovation philosophy. And it's a philosophy of innovation that is about shared innovation. And if you're sharing your innovation, then how do you find the value in that? How do you build a business? How do you pay developers and, and, and uh, find a way to, um, to open up opportunities? And I think that, again, this goes back to you don't rely on technology alone as your differentiator. You combine the technology with services, with uh, other tools. You make vertical implementations. These are all the things that we've seen become successful business models in the open source world. And one of the most successful versions of that is, is public clouds, who take a lot of open source, wrap it in services, provide operations expertise, and deliver a lot of value. Sometimes I hear people today say, well, open source is in trouble because public clouds are the only people who are, who, who are capturing the value. But I think that our community proves that that is completely wrong. We have hundreds of organizations who are here this week who are taking technology, OpenStack, Kubernetes, Ceph, different networking frameworks, different storage tools, and they are adding value. Organizations like CERN, who is speaking this week, they are adding a ton of value, and they're taking that same approach that public clouds are, where they're bringing the tools together and delivering an experience for their user. CERN's a really big deployment. You don't have to have a really big deployment, though, to add value. Le Bon Coin is a French e-commerce company, and they have an OpenStack environment that powers their software development. And their OpenStack environment has less than 20 servers in it, and yet it still adds a ton of value to their organization because it helps them move a lot faster. So all of these things, I think are, are concepts that, that many of us have, have thought about in the past, but I think they're really important for us to continue to think about today. And you know, at Rackspace, we were definitely thinking through this philosophy and these ideas, and ultimately, that's what led us to say, well, let's take the fastest growing part of our business and actually open source the technology that's underneath it and make it available to the world to try to build a bigger collaboration. It was kind of perhaps a crazy move at the time, um, but, uh, but one that, that I think was, was actually based on a very sound uh, philosophy and strategy. 
That was only the start of it, though. You know, that was, that was important, but that really was the start. What happened next, I think, is actually the most awesome part of the OpenStack story, which is the community stepped up and started defining what we wanted our culture to be. And that's ideas like the four opens, you know, which is a, a very high bar for how you collaborate and how you develop technology. We had other principles and tenets that, that we talked about a lot at the time. Technical people should be making the technical decisions. We want to bring in a lot of use cases. We want to bring in a lot of input to drive the, the future of the technology forward. We want to actually invest directly in building a community, a global community, that is able to participate and use the software and direct it. And we want to make sure that users are a central part of all of it, that we're going to fight for those users. And as we, uh, we've gone along, you know, sometimes we forget how far we've come. We just had the OpenStack Stein release, which was our 19th on-time release. Isn't that crazy? You know, 19 releases, that's a long time. But at the same time, what we see is still an incredible velocity within the community. It's one of the top three most active open source projects today. Uh, 65,000 changes in, uh, in the last year went into OpenStack. We have thousands of users and organizations who are running millions and millions of cores in OpenStack clouds, and there is a very large commercial market. This is a, a report about the commercial market in 2018, and uh, this is very large for an open source <laughs> commercial ecosystem. And so, you know, OpenStack is one of the most successful projects in history. It's incredible, and all of you who have participated in that, you should feel really good about what we've accomplished. You know, that's a true testament to what this community has done, and it, uh, it makes me feel so uh, just excited every day to get to, to work in this community. I think that it also speaks to some of the trends that we've been a part of and that are continuing on. And I think one of the biggest trends is that software is how technology gets built and moves forward, and cloud is the fastest way to deliver software. And this is why more and more people want that cloud experience in every aspect of their life and their technology. And I think along with software, we've seen developers becoming a more and more important part of everything that happens. Uh, uh, Steve O'Grady wrote a book about developers being the new kingmakers, and he said, that the most successful companies today are those that understand the strategic role that developers will play in their success or failure. And I think this is true not just for companies, but also communities. So as we start to think about what we've built and where we want to go, I think this is good to keep in mind. You know, we have a community that grew up around OpenStack that's over 100,000 people in almost every country on the planet. So what are we going to do now? That's an awesome resource and an awesome start. But I think that now what we can do is we can apply the lessons that we've learned and have an even bigger impact on the world. How do we build the best infrastructure systems by collaborating across communities, companies, cultures? How do we take OpenStack and other open source infrastructure systems and use them to drive forward the industries that are really going to matter over the next 20 years? We're going to hear about some of that today and throughout the week. People who are building the future right now with open technologies, 5G networks, AI and machine learning industrial automation. This is all happening right here this week and in our world, but it's far from guaranteed that open is gonna win here. And this is where I think our community has a huge opportunity to have a bigger impact on the world. And this is what we've been thinking about as we've made this transition to open infrastructure over the last couple of years. And I wanna bring up someone who has worked with us at the foundation and helped us think through this to talk a little bit about um, her thoughts on where we should go. So please help me welcome Amy Leland. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, uh, as Jonathan said, I've been working with the foundation on uh, thinking through some of the you know, new ways of bringing uh, projects into the foundation. I, uh, I love open source. I've been working in open source uh, for the last 13 years. Uh, I've been working uh, at Intel and bringing new projects uh, into the community, into multiple different communities. Um, these are just a few of the projects that I've worked on and definitely not all encompassing of, uh, of the work that, that I've, I've done within the communities, but you know, there's a lot of things that I've learned uh, building these communities and building these governance models. And a few of them 
is that there's no one size fits all. In any community, every single project has its uh, special thing. And um, I learned that uh, bringing in the community early and often is essential and critical to you know, building a healthy ecosystem. I learned that uh, as a company, that if you want to provide community leadership, you have to be able to look at your company goals as equally as important as the community goals and putting those community goals you know, equal. This is a really long quote about governance, but I think it encompasses a lot of what governance and what governance should be providing. Um, and essentially, governance really ensures that in communities there's transparency, that there's stability, and that there is inclusiveness. And a core value that the foundations bring to open source and to our communities and to our projects is that they actually you know, bring that governance to, these, to our communities. And I believe that the four opens are critical to, to uh, foundational good, or critical and foundational in good governance. So open source, open design, open development, and open community. Uh, it's one of the reasons why we brought Kata Containers and Starling X as new projects to the OpenStack Foundation. And it's not just because of the transparency, it's not just because of the stability and inclusiveness, but it's also about the things that have come out of the projects that we've been working on. And you'll hear later today about some of the things that they're doing in Kata Containers and what I'm talking about, but you know, what's born out of that is new projects and new innovations. But I also think it's more than that. This is a picture of uh, our Kata Containers launch. Uh, and the goal when we brought Kata Containers to OSF is setting up a structure with minimal hierarchy, minimal governance, and just enough to get people together to focus on solving problems across companies. At the end of the day, good governance really isn't about projects. It's about putting people first. And someone once told me that uh, tools follow process and process follows people. And I wholeheartedly believe that. And this com community gets it. It puts people first. This community also works across boundaries, works across communities, works across foundations, works, works across companies, works across industries, and knows that every part of the open source community and ecosystem is essential to a thriving and healthy open source ecosystem. The whole point of open source is to not have walled gardens. And at the end of the day, I believe that if we work together and if we focus on putting people first, on uh, you know, good governance, and work together on solving problems that we can set or that we can solve the next set of challenges within open infrastructure. So thank you. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. So uh, you know, collaboration without boundaries, I think, is, is a theme that has developed over the last couple of years within our, our community. And uh, what I have, have seen that's really gotten me excited since we've been talking about this is some of the areas where this is happening specifically. Um, you know, we have, a, we have a ton of sessions this week that are from a lot of different open source projects. I think we have over 30 different uh, open source projects that are participating in our collaborative sessions this week. And, uh, and that is, is really, I think, how we're going to move forward and solve new challenges in new industries and new use cases. Um, Amy mentioned that later on in the keynotes, we're going to be hearing about one of these new emerging collaborations. Uh, it's called Rust VMM, so uh, look out for that one. Uh, I think you know, we've seen a lot of, of interaction between the OpenStack and Kubernetes communities. Our most recent user survey, we asked people, what workloads are you running on top of your OpenStack clouds? 61% of them said Kubernetes, which is, is really, to me, a proof point that people want, want these tools to be working together. 
And so, you know, that to me is what collaboration without boundaries is all about. Um, but it's also, you know, I, I think that, that when we talk about collaboration, a lot of times we default to tech and open source. Uh, I mentioned earlier that, that music has been a very important part of my life. And a couple of years ago, I saw a documentary. It was called The Music of Strangers. Um, how, how many of you have heard of Yo-Yo Ma? Okay, this is great. You're, you're all music nerds, too. <laughs> so Yo-Yo Ma is one of, the, one of the top cellists and one of the top classical musicians uh, in the world. And he has had a very successful career. He is a soloist with, with top symphonies pretty much everywhere, anytime he wants. But a few years ago, he had an idea, and he wanted to do something different. He wanted to bring together a group of musicians, not to form a traditional symphony where everyone comes together and kind of plays music that you know and does it in a standard way. He wanted to bring people together to collaborate, not to conform. And so he created uh, this project, the Silk Road Project, Silk Road Ensemble, um, that was focused around bringing together musicians from all over the world and having them bring their perspective, their experience, sometimes new instruments that you wouldn't normally see in a, in a, a, a kind of a, a standard musical setting, um, to collaborate and to create something new. And it took a little while to figure it out. You know, if you watch the documentary, it's not like they all showed up and in the first hour, incredible things happen. You know, they had to understand how to fit it all together. But over time, they did create something that was really new and beautiful and, uh, and exciting. And in the movie, there's a quote. He says, we don't all speak perfect English or Chinese or Persian, but we speak perfect music language. I also recently heard another quote that said, um, there are only two universal languages, music and code. And so I think that's a, that's a really interesting thing to think about, because in some ways, what we do is we bring together people from all over the world with their experiences, um, their perspectives, and their contribution to create something that's also new and special and useful. And occasionally, we also combine music and code. <laughs> this is a, a photo from uh, uh, the PTG in Denver that we did uh, last year. And uh, um, we found a piano and spontaneously decided to do a little bit of a karaoke night. And you know, I think that, that what it shows is that, like Amy was saying, this community is about people. It's about all of us coming together to contribute to what we want to build and how we want to build it. So as we kick off this first Open Infrastructure Summit, I want to encourage all of us to do that this week, but also going forward over the coming weeks and months and years. You know, let's bring our different perspectives, let's bring our skills, our contributions together, and create something powerful, and take the things that we've already made, take them to new areas, take them to new use cases, and keep pushing our corner of the world to be more open and more collaborative.